Hello, my name is Brent Reed, and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Maryland School of Pharmacy and a member of the Atrium Cardiology Collaborative. Today I'll be covering the concept of cardiac contractility, which is part of our series on advanced heart failure. And recall that the determinants of cardiac output are heart rate and stroke volume. And stroke volume can be further divided into its three determinants, preload, cardiac contractility, and afterload. Today we'll be focusing specifically on cardiac contractility. Now, cardiac contractility refers to the intrinsic strength of contraction imparted by individual, individual myocardial cells as a result of the dynamic interaction between actin and myosin. Now, contractility cannot be measured directly, so instead it is inferred by changes in stroke volume. Now, here's a diagram of many of the processes going on inside a typical myocardial cell. Now don't be overwhelmed by everything that's going on in this diagram, as I'll point out the pieces that are relevant to our discussion. Now, contractility is heavily influenced by intracellular calcium concentrations because calcium is necessary to facilitate the interactions between actin and myosin, as shown here on the right hand side. As a consequence, physiologic signals that increase intracellular calcium concentrations are often targeted to improve contractility. The two major sources of calcium in myocardial cells are the sarcoplasmic reticulum, shown here on the left-hand side, and the influx of calcium through transmembrane calcium channels, as shown here at the top. Now, two of the physiologic pathways used to enhance intracellular calcium concentrations are beta-adrenergic receptors, which are activated by endogenous catecholamines, and angiotensin II receptors, which are activated by the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Now in heart failure, contractility is impaired as a result of damage to myocardial cells. Now this may occur as the result of an acute event, like a myocardial infarction, which results in a localized zone of myocardial damage. In an MI, emphasis is placed on prompt restoration of blood flow to prevent permanent tissue death. Alternatively, the impact on contractility may be more insidious, such as the pathologic remodeling that may occur as a result of chronic conditions, like uncontrolled hypertension, chronic ischemia, or poorly treated chronic heart failure. Now, some chronic drug therapies, like beta blockers, are capable of reversing this remodeling process. Now, in advanced stages of heart failure, where contractility is significantly impaired, the use of positive inotropic drugs like dibutamine or milrinone may be necessary to restore contractility. In more advanced cases, inotropes may be required as a bridge to definitive treatment with mechanical circulatory support or cardiac transplantation. Thank you, and that concludes today's presentation on cardiac contractility.